Welcome to Accounting 101, Lesson 2, an Introduction to Double Entry Bookkeeping. In today's session, we're going to look at the basic principles of double entry bookkeeping. We're going to be entering bank and cash transactions into the T accounts. We're going to be double checking that our debits and our credits come down to zero. So the accounting equation, you should already know this if you've watched lesson one. So the fact that assets minus liabilities always equals capital. So a reminder that assets are things owned by the business, liabilities are amounts owed by the business, and capital is the amount invested in the business by its owner. If we were looking at a limited company rather than capital, we would have equity um, and it would be shareholders funds rather than uh, the owner's capital. Um, so every time a transaction takes place, two separate figures within the accounts are going to be changed. And with every transaction that occurs, one account is debited and another is credited. That is the basic principle of double entry bookkeeping. So last session, we looked at the differences between assets and liabilities. Um, we need to make some important distinctions between income and expenses. So expenses and assets often get confused. Expenses um, is money that's been paid out for day to day running costs of the business, things like wages, motor expenses um, and rent. Not to be confused with assets. So when we buy an asset, we've generally got something to show for it. So an asset is something, if it's a non-current asset, it's going to be there for more than a year. So it's something tangible, generally like a, a motor vehicle, some computer equipment and so on. It could be a current asset. So something the business owns, like money in the bank, cash that it's got in the till or in the safe, um, inventory. So this is goods that have been bought to resell but haven't been sold yet. That's classed as inventory. Um, and trade receivables amounts are owed to the business by its customers. So expenses are very distinct from assets. So with an expense, just think to yourself, have I got anything to show for it? If not, it's just something that's been paid out, a running cost, an overhead, that's going to be classed as an expense. Income, on the other hand, is money that's been received, it's been earned by the business. So usually the, the biggest source of income for any business is going to be sales revenue from the goods or the services that the business is selling. But other sources could be anything like commission received, bank interest received, discount received, commission received, anything that received past tense ED on the end is going to be a source of income. Not to be confused with receivables, which are um, a type of asset, money owed to the business by its customers. Um, try not to confuse income with liabilities. They're both credit balances in our double entry system. But income is earned income and liabilities are amounts owed by the business. So although a loan will result in money coming into the business, it's not been earned. It's been borrowed. So it will be classed as a liability rather than income. So we'll see more about this and the, the importance of distinguishing between these two as we go on. So the format of a double entry account, and we call them T accounts because they do look like a T shape, and it has two sides, a debit side and a credit side. So if you think of the debits as pluses really and the credits as minuses, um, all we're doing is recording transactions, but every transaction there needs to be generally a debit and a credit. So debits go on the left, credits go on the right, and one idea of how you can remember which way round, in the UK we drive on the left and you could say that if we didn't do that we would crash on the right. So debits on the left, DR is short for debit, um, the old fashioned word debitor, that's where we get the R from in case you were wondering, and credit, CR, short for creditor um, originally, but debits and credits, debits on the left, credits on the right. Okay, and then we have to give the account a title so you can see here this is the bank account. Every single thing that appears on our financial statements will have its own T account. So we'll see as we go on, we end up with quite a number of these things. Um, so the format, as it as I already said, is similar to the letter T. So that's why we call it a T account. Okay, in terms of what are debits, what are credits, there's a mnemonic we can use to help us remember. So on the debit side, we're going to find things like drawings, expenses, assets, and included within assets is trade receivables. So I've included receivables there. I'm using the demonic, uh, demonic, the, the mnemonic, dear clip. You might know it as dead click or pearls. Um, it's all very similar. Stick with whichever one you prefer. But if you haven't come across a mnemonic to help you remember, dear click could well be your friend. So this is like dead click, but instead of having the DEAD, we've got DEAR. Um, so I'm just organizing this into debits and credits. So drawings, money taken 
for their own use by the owner, expenses, day-to-day running costs, and included in that is the purchase of goods for resale. Assets, so it could be non-current assets or current assets are on the debit side. And trade receivables, a type of asset, um, just to help you remember the difference really between trade receivables and trade payables. So on the credit side, we've got CLIP as our mnemonic. So the C stands for capital, that's money introduced to the business by the owner. Liabilities, things like bank overdrafts, loans, and so on. Any source of income is going to be recorded on the credit side, so including their sales revenue, be the main source for most businesses. And then payables, which are actually a type of liability. Trade payables is money owed by the business to its suppliers. Okay, so dear clip, maybe write that down somewhere, put it on a post-it note, try and memorise it because it will always help you solve double entry when you need to. So each transaction that occurs will result in an entry into two different T accounts. Okay, so for example, here we've got some wages being paid out of the bank account. So when we pay wages, we need to think, well, what's increased, what's decreased? We've paid some wages, so we need to record that on the debit side of the the wages account, it's an expense, but we need to take the money out of the bank account um, and put a credit entry into the bank account to reduce the bank balance. So we're now going to look at five transactions. We're going to think first of all about what the debit and credit would be, and then we're going to show how those would be plugged into the T accounts. Okay, so the first one then, the owner has paid £10,000 into the bank. So we don't have an account called owner, but if you remember, we do have an account called capital. So capital is the owner's account with the business. It's the amount that the owner has invested. And if you remember back to the dear clip, capital is on the credit side. So we're going to be crediting the capital account with £10,000 and we'll be paying that money into the bank. We'll be debiting the bank. And remember that the bank account, when there's money in it, is an asset. It's only a liability if it's overdrawn. So debit the bank, credit the owner's capital account. Number two, we've received rent of £200 in cash. So rent received is an income account, so that's going to be on the credit side. Remember, the I for income is under the clip, so it's on the credit side. Credit income, the rent received in this case, and debit cash. So we've got an asset account for cash, so we're going to debit that to increase it. So remember, cash can only ever be an asset. It can't be overdrawn. The worst scenario with cash is that it's exactly zero. It can't go to minus figures, unlike the bank, which can be overdrawn. Okay, number three, we've paid £100 of cash into the bank. So we've got two assets involved here, the bank and the cash account. And we've just got to think about which way around the money has moved. We've paid £100 of cash into the bank. So the bank will be increasing, so we need to debit that, whereas the cash will be decreasing, so we need to credit that. Number four, we've paid some wages, £50 in cash. So we've paid wages, that's an expense. Remember, it's on the dear side, on the debit side. So we'll debit wages, £50, and we'll reduce the cash balance. So that asset has got smaller, so we need to credit the cash account with £50. And then the last transaction, we've bought a van for £5,000 paying by cheque. Now, if we pay by cheque, that comes straight out of the bank account. So we've bought a van, we're going to debit the asset, the van account, £5,000, and we're going to credit the bank because the money has come out of the bank account. So let's look and see how those would be recorded in the T account. So when we draw up our T accounts, usually um, we would have dates involved for these transactions. We haven't got any dates here, we've just got transaction numbers. So I'm going to use those in place of where the date would be. So in our bank account, we're going to show that £10,000 that the owner's paid in coming into the bank, so it's on the debit side of the T account. So in real life, you'd have a date rather than the number one. Then you'd have some information here about where the other half of this entry can be found. So we've paid £10,000 into the bank. This bit here tells us what that £10,000 was for, and it logs where the other half of the entry is going. So we've debited the bank account with £10,000. We're crediting the capital account. So in the capital account, we're showing transaction number one, but remember that would usually be a date. And we're showing where the other half of this entry is. £10,000 owner's capital has been paid into the bank account. So the bank's increased by £10,000, so is the capital account. And if you think about your accounting equation, assets are now £10,000. We've got £10,000 in the bank and there are no liabilities. So assets minus liabilities is £10,000 and that is equal to the capital. So the accounting equation still balances. Transaction number two, we've received rent of £200 in cash. 
So we're going to open up a rent received account. Remember that's income. So we're going to credit the rent received account and debit the cash account. So cash is showing £200 coming in, rent received £200. Rent received is income, that's on the credit side. Cash is an asset when it's paid in, so that's on the debit side. Number three, we've paid £100 cash into the bank. So we're going to debit our bank account and credit our cash account. So the bank account is going up by £100 here and the cash account is going down by £100. And remember that we've logged where the other half of that entry is. So cash, we've taken £100 out. Where's it gone? Well, it's gone to the bank. And here, if we look at the bank account, we've paid £100 in and that £100 has come from cash. So what we're doing here is creating something called an audit trail where we can see where the other half of the entry is. So if anyone wanted to check, they'd be able to see what we've done. <clears throat> um, number four, we've paid £50 wages in cash. So we're going to put that, open up a wages account. Remember that's an expense. So we're going to debit the wages account, £50, and we're going to credit the cash account, £50 coming out of there. And then the last transaction, we bought a van for £5,000 paying by cheque. So we're going to open up a van account. That's an asset, a type of asset, a non-current asset. We're going to debit that with £5,000 and we're going to credit the bank account with £5,000. And remember that that shows where the other half of the entry is. One final thing we need to do is just check that all our debits and credits actually agree. So we're going to add up all of the debits here. We're going to do the same with the credits. And if the two numbers are the same, then that means that for every debit, there is a credit. It doesn't necessarily mean everything's 100% correct because we may have posted something into the wrong account, but we can be reassured that the double entry is correct. So we do a quick check here, add up the debits, add up the credits. Each side adds up to 15,350. So I think that means that we can uh, say that's correct. So in terms of lesson review, did we manage to apply the basic principles of double entry bookkeeping? Can you remember your dear clip, what it means? Um, can you remember how to write transactions into the T account? If not, go back and have another look. Are you able to post the bank and cash transactions into T accounts? We've covered that. Um, and did you remember to uh, check the overall balance on the T accounts comes down to zero. So the debits minus the credits equals zero. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, um, and then I can keep you posted with the uh, latest releases. Thanks for watching.